Well, it happened again exactly, almost exactly like the last time. We're not going to repeat what we said Wednesday night, but the London Magic again got out of victory, and that says a lot. We'll get to that and the second half coming up on today's episode of Locked On Magic. You are Locked On Magic, your daily Orlando magic podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. On Magic today is November 18th, 2023. My name is Philip Ross from Mike. I'm the expert and site editor over at Orlando Magic Daily.com. Of course, follow me on Twitter at Philip RR underscore OMD. On today's episode of Locked On Magic, the Orlando Magic are on the board in the end season tournament with a 103 97 win over the Chicago Bulls. How it happened and what it says about this team. And oh, yeah, the second half still really kind of suck. We will, we will talk about all that, break it all down, the growth and the growth still to come on today's episode. We'll get to that coming up here in just a moment. But first, we want to thank you again for making Locked On Magic part of your day every day, no matter when you listen to us, whether it's first thing in the morning, whether it's right when we upload. We truly appreciate you making Locked On Magic part of your day every day. Remember, there's a great Locked On podcast covering every single team in the NBA. Just search for Locked On and the team you're looking for, the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Don't forget, we have an early start on Sunday. The Orlando Magic take on the Indiana Pacers Sunday at 5 p.m. Eastern time. You can check out the hometown broadcast with Jake Chapman on the SiriusXM app. Just just search search for Magic on your SiriusXM app to listen to the game. Friday's game is going to sound like a broken record. Um, It's a broken record from Wednesday's game, in fact. Almost completely. The Orlando Magic once again held the Bulls to 33 points in the first half. They once again took a 15-point lead at halftime. They once again took as much as a 20-point lead in the second half. And then Chicago started to reel the Magic back in. There's only a 12, it was a 15-point lead at the half. It was only 12 points entering the third quarter. And then, you know, and the Magic led by 15 with seven and a half minutes to go. So things happen very, very quickly. In fact, Chicago put on a 16-0 run on the Orlando Magic to take a one-point lead on a Kobe White dunk and and one basket. Um, This became a game from that point forward. And once again, Orlando, despite giving up the lead, despite their own problems and inconsistencies, had to find a way to gut out a win. They had to find a way to get the victory. And after Alex Caruso hit a go-ahead three-pointer with 26 seconds left, it looked like the Magic had finally played with fire a little bit too long. It looked like the Magic had finally done enough or or hadn't done enough to win the game. Oh, but the Mad, this is not who that Magic team is. And, and, And this is the point. This is the point of the whole episode today and, and, and the point of growth that we need to emphasize. Because, yes, the Magic were terrible once again in the second half. They were terrible, uh, fourth quarter more specifically. They were terrible in the fourth quarter once again. The offense stagnated. The screens weren't set the, at the right angle, at the right angles. Um, the team struggled to get consistent shots. They couldn't get to the foul line, their bread and butter. They relied so heavily on second chance points and offensive rebounds. And the Bulls just kept coming, kept coming, kept coming. And the Magic defense could only hold on for so long. Credit to them for holding on as long as they did. But shot making is going to win. And Chicago hit big shots to put the pressure on Orlando. And Orlando struggled to stay completely locked in. But trailing by one point, now in a game at the end, Orlando seemed to find their call, seemed to find their poise. Orlando seemed at least a little bit comfortable with the scenario and with the setting. And that's when the Magic turned back to the same play that won them the game on Wednesday. A little dive screen for Paolo Bancaro, Franz Wagner in the backcourt as the last out, outlet, uh, as a l- last resort outlet. The Magic were going to do it again to Chicago. 
But of course, Chicago adjusted. That was expected. Tory Craig was on Paolo Bancaro this time, denied the ball, denied the inbound directly to him. And so the Magic went to Wagner. And this time they got Wagner with a head of steam coming downhill into a pick from Jonathan Isaac that was very well set. Forced Nikola Vucevic into defending him in space. Where have we seen that before, Magic fans? And Wagner got to the basket, finished at the rim, and got the foul. Magic up two. And again, just so calm and so poised. Now, granted, Chicago did end up missing a wide-open three-pointer from Nikola Vucevic as Jonathan Isaac crashed down to try and stop a DeMar DeRozan attack to the rim. Probably not the time he needed to crash down, go against his instincts there, but Vooch missed the three. Isaac got the rebound his ninth of the game, hit two free throws, made it a four-point game. Gary Harris knocked the ball away from Zach Levine on the next possession, hit two more free throws. Magic win, 103 to 97. Yes, there are problems with the second half. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Um, it is unavoidable. It is something this team has to figure out and has to fix. But let's take growth for what it is. Let's take growth for, let's take, let's understand and recognize an area where this team has grown and has gotten better. The Magic could have folded after giving up a 20 point lead the same way they gave up a 19 point lead on Wednesday. They could have folded, they could have given the game away, and a younger team, and this team maybe last year, might have done that. They blew leads last year too. And it took a a certain amount of resolve to learn the lesson. We remember the Miami games. The Magic lost uh, at home to Miami after a 12-point lead on a Jimmy Butler shot at the end. It's forced to force overtime. They lost in overtime. Exactly one month later, the Magic found themselves in the exact same situation, up again, blowing a lead, Butler forcing overtime, and the Magic decided they weren't losing that game. This team has a resolve to win. And so while, yes, there are issues to solve and there are problems to figure out, and this Magic team has to find a way to learn how to manage and grow these leads in the second half, it is a problem, and we're going to talk about it. I'm not here to ignore it, but I am here to recognize growth when we see it. The Magic are still winning these games. Yes, the Hawks game was frustrating. The Dallas game was frustrating. There's there, there's there's plenty to clean up, and the, and the Magic are certainly playing with fire. But the Magic are not completely backing out of the deal. They're still fighting. They're still competing, and they're still giving themselves a chance to win. And guess what? The last two nights, the last two games, Orlando came out with the victory. Orlando came out with a win. And at the end of the day, that's all the record's going to care about. Um, yes, point differential matters for this in-season tournament. Orlando gave up a humongous opportunity to cut into the 20-point deficit they buried themselves in against Brooklyn at 1-1, one one, with Brooklyn at 2-1, and one at uh, and the Celtics at 2-0. and oh. Yeah, Orlando's going to have to win out. They're going to have to beat Boston. They're probably going to need a blowout victory somewhere. And they're probably going to need Brooklyn to lose to Toronto. Is that going to happen? Toronto is interesting. But the Magic have work to do for the in-season tournament. They put themselves in a deep hole, and they gave away that an, a, a golden opportunity to make that work a lot easier when they get back to the Amway Center. But, now, nevertheless, wins are wins are wins are wins. At the end of the season, when the Magic are trying to make the play-in tournament, trying to get the 60, wherever they end up being this year, all that's going to matter is that they had they scored more points than the other team that day. And that's all that matters right now. You scratch out and gut wins and learn your lessons along the way while you win. And that's what this team is doing. And that's what this team is showing more and more. Jamal Mosley has a lot to be proud of with this team. He's a lot to show this team to say like, hey, this is a good thing that we did. We got a big stop. We got a big shot when we needed it. We made, we executed when the chips were down in these two games in Chicago. Yeah, the Magic were rough to get there, but they executed when they had to. They won the game. And that's 
such a big thing for a young team. This team won 34 games last year. This team has not learned how to win games consistently yet. They're getting there. They're, they're, they're getting there quicker than you think. Um, they're probably more ready than you think as well. Uh, and please, keep holding them to a higher standard saying they should be better. Yeah, absolutely they should be better. But recognize that growth to get there. Recognize that growth to, to say that this team is better than their 7-5 and five record so far. Because that is growth. And this team has shown a deeper resolve and a deeper poise to win games than I think a lot of us expected. There are still growing pains to come. We're going to talk about some of them in a minute. There are still growing pains to come that are natural for young teams. And we are experiencing them very clearly. But this team also has developed a a determination and a poise when the chips are down to at least give themselves a shot. Not that there isn't still plenty to clean up. We do, we will and have to talk about that second half. We're going to get to that coming up here in just a moment. But first, it's time for a quick word from our friends over at Game Time. Hey, look, the Atlanta Magic are coming back home. They got they finished this road trip up Sunday in Indianapolis against the Indiana Pacers. Then the in-season tournament is at the Amway Center, Tuesday against the Toronto Raptors. Friday against the Boston Celtics, and in between Wednesday at home, the only time the defending champion Denver Nuggets make their trip to Orlando, at least until the NBA Finals. Yeah, I said it. You know, we'll see them in the Finals. Um, If you want tickets for this holiday week to the Amway Center to see the Orlando Magic play, game time is really the only place you should go. They they provide you upfront pricing, includes it. Includes all the fees and stuff like that. They offer last minute tickets, flash deals, zone deals. They let you see your seat before you buy it. Really, I've used Game Time. It is the place I go to when I need ticket. When I need to get tickets, Game Time is obsessed with finding ways to help you save money on tickets. They have deals on tickets right up to the start of the event, and even an hour after it starts. If you decide to go late, it's the place to find last minute seats. And the game time guarantee means you'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less, game time is going to credit you 110% of the difference. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, and use code locked on NBA for $20 off your first purchase. Terms do apply. So create an account and redeem code locked on NBA. That's L O C K E D O N N B A for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. You know, again, I want to be positive. Um, This was a good win. Uh, Second night in Chicago, very tough to beat teams teams in consecutive games. Um, In season tournament win, so you know they they stepped up to the plate in a big moment. This is this was essentially an elimination game for the group. Um, It you know Chicago is only zero and two, but they have lost. But they've uh, they've now lost. I think both of their home games. Uh, Brooklyn and Orlando, they still got to go to Boston. They still got to go to Toronto. Um, it's it's hard. You know, they got a long, you know, like two and two isn't going to get you a wild card, almost certainly. Um, it, it is going to take a, a lot to happen. A lot of chaos would have to happen in this group for Chicago to advance because now they're minus eight uh, on the point differential. This was a big game. This was a big, big win. Orlando is coming home for this in-season tournament. They got a game in Indianapolis. I'm not skipping that. Trust, you know, that that game is going to be interesting to say the least. Um, But Orlando is coming home next week to games that matter at the Amway Center. Uh, And again, I want to see Blue and White Ignite. I want to see the Magic fans come out and treat this with the intensity it deserves. This Magic team needs that lift, especially because these second halves have been a real, real big struggle. Entering the game, the Orlando Magic were the, I think, third or second or third worst team in the league in net rate by net rating in the second half. I know for a fact, entering the game, they were the third worst team in the league by uh, by net rating in the fourth quarter. Second halves have been a struggle, and you know everyone on the team can't quite place their finger on why. Orlando gave up 33 points in the first half of this game. They gave up 32 in each of the third and fourth quarters. Um, 
this time it was the defense. It is not typically the defense that that falters because Orlando scored 55 points um, in in the second half, which isn't great, uh, especially when you're giving up 64. But they they their offense, I don't want to say it was good. It, it wasn't. Um, but their offense put their defense in some compromising positions. But the offense did have some good moments. They scored a lot of points in the third quarter. They were able to execute and score in the fourth quarter. So uh, we're going to get to some of this, some of this in a minute. But uh, this, this, this game wasn't as bad as th- as Wednesday's game. Like this was a better second half from the Orlando Magic. They made shots. They just continued to make some very, very key mistakes. And you know, it starts with a lot of things the Magic can control, and that's that's the frustrating part of all this. It's not so much that opponents are stepping up their defense or, or doing something different to throw the magic off. The issue for this magic team still seems to remain that it's self-inflicted wounds. It's mistakes. It's youthful mistakes that are kind of tightening the screws and making them feel a little congested. Um, in this game, Orlando had 19 turnovers. They had 10 of them in the, in the second half, but I believe they had, they gave up 19 points off of turnovers 16 of those came in the second half. Orlando scored 25 points off 16 Chicago turnovers. So mistakes are huge, and turnovers are a big factor in this game. Paolo Bancaro, and Orlando's essentially playing without a point guard. You know, Anthony Black doesn't really isn't really a point guard, um, not yet at least. Um, Jalen Suggs kind of runs point for this team. Marco Fultz is obviously still out. Cole Anthony is the closest thing to a point guard on the team. He played a team high 36 45 in this game. And despite shooting three for 12, seven assists was a big deal for, for, for the Magic. You know, he helped distribute the ball. Joe Ingles is essentially playing a lot of point guard, too. He played 25 and a half minutes. He had five assists in the game. And look, that's the thing. This team is still missing some organization, some calm, and, and just generally some poise. Like, they find it when they have to have it. But managing the boring parts of the game, managing the middle of the third quarter or the end of the third quarter or the start of the fourth, that's where your money is made. Like, this is ultimately like the goal for every young team. It's easy to get up for the really big teams, for the really good teams. It's easy to, it's easy to be focused at critical moments. Like, when the game is on the line, it is easy to be focused and to execute. What this young team has to do and has to do better is to be great at the boring, to make the boring their thing. Um, you know, it's, I always say this, the NBA regular season is about consistency. It's about what you do on a random Tuesday in January. That random Tuesday in January is the five minute mark of the third quarter. Like, what are you, how are you playing in that stretch? You know, up by 10, seven minutes to go in the fourth. How are you playing? Is it the same? Is it, is it different? Do you let off the gas? That's kind of where this Magic team is at. You know, Paolo is a great example of this. Paolo has made some tremendous strides as a passer. But for whatever reason, he was just a beat late on everything. This, he didn't have a lot of zip on his passes. They, they weren't getting where they needed to go. Chicago did a good job crowding him and, and making him feel that their physicality in the paint. He had seven turnovers. And w- those mistakes were just killer. And especially when you're trying to protect the lead, turning the ball over and giving you know a free possession to your opponent, that just eats you up. And so why, why are the Magic struggling? Um... I think pace has a lot to do with it, not possessions, but watch how the Magic run their offense in these second halves. It's slow. Again, when coaches talk about pace, they talk about the speed at which uh, the team executes its offense. They're getting into their sets late. They are moving through their sets slowly. They're not setting screens at the proper angles. They're getting blitzed and backing up instead of attacking. Um, they're not making the correct reads. They're turning the ball over. You're not going to win playing that way. And that, you know, when teams like start to heighten their intensity, the Magic are struggling to match it consistently. Or they're just simply making mistakes. I mean, at the end of the day, like, Paolo is the guy you want with the ball in his hands. You know, the Magic say, Mosley says this all the time. 
you know, he is a good decision. You know, he is a, they trust his decision making. They trust his IQ. He made a lot of bad decisions in this game. Uh, and, you know, that has been a repeated flaw of this team throughout the season. They just make mistakes and, and they're aggressive mistakes. I don't mind them. They're, they're, you know, there are some lazy ones, but there are players who are the guys you want with the ball in their hands, just making errors. And they tend to compound. They tend to come in bunches. And that's what kills this team. You know, why did the Magic give the lead up in this one? Well, DeMar DeRozan started making shots and Orlando defended him decently. They probably let him walk into a few too many of his mid-range jumpers, but they let him make shots. They let him get warm. Zach Levine started hitting shots. Turnovers just killed this team. Um, Chicago is very good at forcing turnovers. I think, you know, we're going to see, you know, we've seen Chicago now twice in a row. Orlando and Chicago are two of the top three teams in the league enforcing turnovers this year uh, at turnover rate this year. Um, those are teams that are very good at being disruptive and getting out and, and, and using that to feed their off what little offense they have because they're both very bad at offense. Um I think when we see Indiana, Indiana's a very different team. They're they're a little disruptive. They want to get turnovers too, but they're not as strong defensively. And obviously Orlando has to figure out a way to get in the paint with Miles Turner in there. Um, they're not as strong offensively. Their their deal is we're gonna get the ball out, we're gonna we're gonna go quickly and try and score as quickly as we can. Um, it's gonna be a very different challenge on Sunday. Um, and so I think you know, we've been kind of in this pit for the last three days of a really good defensive team. Now, the Magic are not a good offensive team, and, and they struggle to execute against a lot of pressure. Um, and so it's something they have to continue to improve on. And everyone knows they have to improve on it. But it starts with their own mistakes. And, and honestly, that's that's what I'm seeing in these second halves. It's turnovers. Cut out the turnovers. Make sure you get a shot, because the Magic are fighting on the offensive glass. They're, they're getting looks. You know, they they scored enough in this, they scored enough in the second half that that their defense should be able to carry them a little bit, especially with the lead that they had. And obviously they did. They ended up doing that. Um, but it, it starts with their mistakes. And, and I think that's where these second halves have gone wrong is Orlando, Orlando gets tight and they just make mistakes, and those mistakes tend to compound. And that's what young teams struggle with. And so as a young team, they got to figure out a way. To, to rise above that. And, and that's that's ultimately going to be the challenge for this group this season. But we'll go through the final box score when we come back, ch chat a little bit about individual performances, what we saw, especially from our good guy, Jonathan Isaac. We'll get to that coming up here in just a moment. But first, it's time for a quick word from our friends over at FanDuel. Score early this NFL season. We're almost to the end of the season. We're in really crunch time. The playoff races are heating up. And you want to get in on the action with America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is so easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season today. FanDuel as an official partner of the NFL. As we do after every game, let's go through the final box score, talk a little bit more about individual performances from this game. Uh, again, like this game, despite the score being very similar, was very different from Wednesday's game. The Magic were actually, I don't want to say good offensively, but they were decent. 48.1% shooting, certainly better. They were like 39% in Wednesday's game. 11 for 34 from three. Okay, only 32.4% from deep, which is below their average, but they made their threes. They took, they made one more three than Chicago in this game. Um, still some guys that are cold. Joe Ingles was two for seven. Franz Wagner was two for eight. But, you know, they, you know, they, they made, they made their threes relatively. The killer was 16 for 23 from the foul line. Um, you know, again, one for four from Paolo, two for four from Goga Batadze, uh, you know, one for two from Franz Wagner. Magic. You know, they didn't get to the foul line enough in this game. They still got more free throws than Chicago. They didn't get to the foul line enough, and that is another problem that they typically have in the second half where they're not nearly as aggressive or not getting the whistle as much in second halves. But again, we want to see the Magic at around 30 free throws per game, if not 30, 31, 32 free throws per game. Um, 
they're sec they were they entered the game second in the league in free throw and free throw rate. Um, you know, they're at about 30, 23 is 79. Let me do let me grab my calculator here. They ended up with a 29.1 free throw rate, which is a little bit below their average, and but close to it. So maybe that wasn't as much of a problem as we perceived it to be. This was a low possession game. Both teams like to slow the ball down. Um, and so Orlando did good things offensively. Now, they, they went cold at the wrong time. They missed an open three when they needed a shot. Um, you know, there, there were a lot of things that, that they did well and didn't do well. Um, again, Big, you know, you look at the formula for the Magic to win. We talked about that last week. 10 offensive rebounds for Orlando that led to uh, 14 second chance points. That's pretty good. They outscored Chicago 14 to 3 on, on second chance points. They outscored Chicago 56 to 34 in the paint. That's also very good. Only gave up, uh, gave up 17 for 33 shooting. They were 26 for 38. Very, very good there. Fast break points. Neither team is really good at getting fast break points 4 4. Like that, you're going to live with that. Um, Orlando, you know, checked off so many of the boxes that they have to do offensively to be at least competent. And I, you know, again, I, I think that Orlando's offense was generally pretty good throughout the game. They started off one for nine. Um, so that makes them 30, 37 for 70, the rest of the way, which, you know, is pretty good. Um, they were able to make shots consistently. Now, obviously they went through that 16 uh, drought uh, when they, when they gave up 16 unanswered points in the fourth quarter, a lot of that's turnovers. Like, like I think even Dante Marcatelli and Jeff Turner noted that on the broadcast in the third quarter. We're shooting 50% in, in the third quarter, but just turning the ball over so much. Um, the key for this Magic team, if there's one number that matters, the key for this Magic team is reducing turnovers. Orlando creates so many turnovers. Their, their defense is so disruptive. They're going to make up a huge difference with that. That's how they build their leads is they get a lot of steals. They get, they, they, they're able to kind of get out and transition, kickstart their offense a little bit by, by getting into it early, by trying to put, you know, find mismatches. Um, their, their, their ability to create turnovers is really impressive, but they can't be just giving those possessions away. The ball, it, you know, these possessions are so valuable for them because they tend to play at a slower pace uh, possessions wise. Um, and because they're just not a good enough shooting team. They will get, you know, it was a joke in the fourth quarter. Their best offense was missing a shot and getting the rebound. The Magic got so many offensive rebounds. They're going to be competitive because of that. What they can't do is give those give those possessions right back. So that's the important thing. Let's talk about individuals then. Franz Wagner leads the team in scoring 21 points, 9 for 18 shooting, 2 for 8 from deep, 4 rebounds, 2 assists, 2 steals for him. Game-winning basket or the go-ahead basket with 27 seconds to play or 21 seconds to play or 17 seconds. I don't remember how, how exactly how long how long was left, but very toward the end of the game, just a great step-through move past Nikola Vucevic to the basket with the foul. Just classic Franz Wagner stuff. He had Vucevic backpedaling. Magic fans know that very very well. Um, it was kind of refreshing and both haunting to see. Uh, the Magic do that to him because we, we've seen that so many times. But just a great, great, great finish from Franz Wagner in a big moment. Just, again, you can't speak highly enough of the poise to make that shot. Um, Gary Harris in the starting lineup because Jalen Suggs was out was out, was a, out with left knee soreness. 15 points, 5 for 10, shooting 3 for 7 from deep. Added 6 rebounds. Added a steal and a 2 blocks. I think they credit him with a block on the... Uh, on the strip of Zach Levine toward the end of the game. Uh, just again, a, a really, really nice game from Gary Harris. It was good to have him out there. I will note that in on the Franz Wagner, um, on the Franz Wagner go ahead basket, Gary Harris was in the corner next to him. If that's Jalen Suggs, I think the defense collapses on him a little bit and, and does not let him get to the basket. Um, that doesn't guarantee that Gary Harris gets an open shot, but just something to note, shooting does matter. Just like how Joe Ingles opened the space for Paolo Bencaro to drive on Alex Crusoe because Zach Levine couldn't leave Joe Ingles, shooting matters. Um, you know, we can't deny that. Gary Harris had a very good shooting game, made some great, great plays throughout the game uh, and, and put the Magic in a really, really good spot to, to take to take the lead. Um, Mo Wagner with 18 points off the bench, just nine rebounds as well, just continues to just be... Uh, oh, sorry, uh, Mo Wagner had... Sorry, 10 points. Excuse me. I, I read Jonathan Isaac. We'll talk about Isaac here in a minute. Now, Mo Wagner, 10 points, four for five shooting, four rebounds for him. Um, just continues to be 
just anytime he gets the ball near the basket, he's going to score. Um, just really, really confident stuff there. Jonathan Isaac, hero of the game, our sponsor TB, our sponsor TBD player of the game. Don't have a graphic because for some reason they didn't take a picture of him. 18 points, six for eight shooting, two for four from deep, nine rebounds, including three offensive rebounds, uh, as well as a block and a steal. Um, this was Jonathan Isaac's best game since coming back from injury last year. Just everywhere defensively. I mean, cannot emphasize that enough. He was everywhere on defense. Um, made, you know, made, made, made a couple blocks, you know, made a block on DeMar DeRozan, just challenging shots, just gobbling up rebounds. I don't think I, you know, I know he's had big rebounding games before. I don't think I've seen him kind of gobble up and, and just envelop rebounds the way that he did in this game. Um, he is just, he is just playing so well. He's kind of found his groove. He's starting to get his legs under him. And he's like one of those, like, like Anthony Black was earlier in the season. He's just one of those guys that you can't take off the floor. You need him on the floor. And, and the Magic are experimenting right now with him uh, finishing games at center alongside Paolo Bancaro and Franz Wagner. I know I have been skeptical of using Isaac as a center more full-time, but he has really held his own. I've been really impressed with how Isaac has handled that physicality, how he's matched it, how he's still finding ways to be a rim protector. Uh, and look, Goga Batadze is a great rim protector too. He only had two points in this one with four rebounds, but added a, added a couple blocks, was really big on the interior early in the game before foul trouble kind of took him out of it. Isaac just does so many things defensively. Everyone is amazed by his defense. And I think what we're starting to see now is the team knows Isaac's back, back there. And, and, and there's just a trust factor with that where you don't, you know, you could add a little bit more pressure and get beat because Isaac's going to be there to clean stuff up. And, and he is playing like he was back in 2020, back in the 2020 season. He didn't play much in 2020. But back in the 2020 season, when he was on track to be a defensive player of the year candidate, all defensive team player, like he is just everywhere for this team. And it's really, really fun to watch. Um, final, uh, Joe Ingles had eight points, another five assists from him. Again, just Joe Ingles, like I'm at the point now where, Whenever I have to saw, say, you know, how do we fix this lineup? My answer is usually just put Joe Ingles in it. Um, he makes great passes. He's directing traffic for this team. Just really gives this team some veteran calm and poise. Um, if I were making a change to the starting lineup, or again, if I'm making a change to any lineup, my answer right now is usually just add Joe Ingles. It'll be fine. Like, like that's uh, I, I don't know if there's a better compliment I can say about a player other than like I trust him to make good decisions. The shot is starting to come around. This wasn't his best shooting game, just two for seven from deep, but the shot is starting to come around for him. And again, teams respect his shot. I, I, I know I say this all the time as well. Your ability to make the importance of your ability to make threes is not necessarily your ability to shoot a high percentage from three. It's making the defense think you're going to shoot a high percentage from three, that you're always a threat from out there. Uh, and Joe Ingles does that. Like teams do not leave him. And when he does get open, you can hear the groans uh, throughout the United Center when he got open because they everyone knows he is an excellent, excellent shooter. Final guy I want to talk about, Paolo Bancaro. Uh, a mixed bag game for him. 13 points, 6 for 14 shooting, five rebound, or 8 rebounds, excuse me, 4 assists, 7 turnovers. Um, he was, you know, early on, I, it really felt like knowing Jalen Suggs was out, knowing this was a big game, it felt like Paolo was forcing his offense a little bit. Um, you know, it looked like he was really just trying to duck his head and make things go himself. And, and that was, I think, a big reason why the Magic started off as slow as they did. But I also think that Paolo did a really good job early in the game. Um, you know, there are a few turnovers early in the game, but he did a really good job early in the game absorbing pressure the way stars do. And some of his passes were just a tick late or just a dribble late. Um, you know, where he took an extra dribble, maybe let the defense get to him instead of instead of uh, instead of beating them the right way or, or playing them the right way to get an open shot for his teammates. He had a lot of passes that he tried to make through traffic or just were well read or well defended and, and were deflected away deflected away for steals. Um, but the, again, I want to make this really really clear. This season is about Paolo making these mistakes. The Magic are putting the ball in his hands a lot more. They're trusting him to make a lot more decisions. They're trusting him to kind of see the floor and be a, a lead playmaker for this team. And look, I'd like to see them get more shots where he is on the move, off the ball. I don't think he's necessarily your point guard, but the Magic want to try him out in this role and, and get him reps in this role. And, and ultimately, 
his ability to make reads off the dribble and make passes off the dribble is what's going to turn him into a superstar. Yeah, he's going to get to 25 points per game at some point as his efficiency gets better, as he gets to the line a lot more. He's going to get there. But what's really transformative about him is how good of a passer he is at six foot ten. And so a game where he has seven turnovers and he's averaging around four turnovers per game right now, which is high and a number that needs to come down, but these are part of the growing pains for him. A game like this is good for him because he's going to look at the tape. He's going to understand, okay, these are the mistakes I made. And, and the next game is going to come out and he's going to drop six, seven, eight assists because there were six, seven, eight assists on there. There are at least th- four more assists out there for him that he didn't make because he made the right read, but didn't make the right pass. Uh, and that's, that's where we're at with Paolo. Like it's not a straight line. He is going to get better. He is a whole lot better than he was last year. Uh, and he's going to have games like this where he kind of struggles. Um, I'd like to see the shots go up, but again, Chicago was double and triple teaming him or or showing him a lot of bodies and he had to make quick decisions and and make passes. And and this game just didn't call for Paolo to be a a lead scorer. Um, but he has to make smarter decisions and execute better passes. Again, so much of the magic's problems are not about what the other team is doing. All due respect to the other teams. You know, when the magic lose, the other team beats them, but um, so much of the Magic's problems are their decision making, is their ability to execute um, their offense, execute a, a pass, execute a read. So much of these problems are the Magic's problems, and the good news is they're young, so they're learning these. They're learning from these mistakes, so they're learning these mistakes and experiencing these mistakes. The bad news is we all see this team as capable of winning. We all see this team and what its potential is, and. We want them to get there faster. And that's fine. Hold them to a higher standard, please. They are ready. You know, uh, you know, y'all know me. I am a little hesitant to say when a team is ready, I want to enjoy the process. I want to enjoy the moment. I want to enjoy the growth. And I'm, I'm here to tell you to do all that. But yes, they are ready to accomplish more. They are ready to do more. Uh, and a, a win like this shows, is, a win like this, as frustrating as it was, shows what they're capable of doing shows us what their next step is that they can and, and, that they can achieve that step and now it's just about doing it uh, and seeing them execute in critical moments and put themselves in a position to win game and put themselves not only in a position to win games but to start winning games running away that's the next step of this process for the Orlando Magic and obviously there are growing pains and growing pains are frustrating they sting we all remember growing it it, it hurts but it's worth it in the end. You know, you get to be six foot ten, and not not all of us get to be six foot ten and 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 crazy good passers. But some of us are lucky to do that. Um, this team has taken some major steps, and and I don't want that to get lost. This is unequivocally a better team than it was last year. These players have almost universally gotten better than they were last year. Now the question is, okay. How do we, you know, you're better, but how do you be more consistent? How do you do the simple things? How do you embrace the boring to be better in the long run and have that show in the win column and have that show in the standings? We're starting to see that come together. It's coming in fits and starts. Uh, We're starting to see that maybe not at the pace we all think they can or they've shown it, they've made us believe they can, but they are making progress. And again, the goal now is, to keep getting better as the season progresses and to see and nurture and foster this growth all while still winning, which is ultimately what the Magic did in Chicago in these two games. The Orlando Magic defeat the Chicago Bulls 103-97. to They improved to 7-5 and on the regular season, 1-1 and in in-season tournament play. They are minus 14 uh, in the point differential, so they have some work to do to make sure that they have a chance to advance in this in-season tournament. They'll have two games Tuesday and Friday, against the Toronto Raptors and Boston Celtics to close their in-season tournament schedule. But that's going to do it for me today. I want to thank you all again for listening to today's episode of Locked on Magic. Of course, find me on Twitter at philiprr underscore omd. Subscribe to the podcast and Apple Podcasts. Search your tune in Himalay, Google Play, Spotify, Odyssey, and all of them single podcasts to your podcast and able to listen advice related on the Orlando Magic. Be sure to check out orlandomagicdaily.com. You can, of course, find, uh, follow us there on Twitter at omagicdaily. Be sure to check out my Patreon page, the Orlando Magic Hub. That's patreon.com slash Orlando Magic Hub. Uh, truly appreciate all your support if you choose to support. Uh, there's plenty of extra content and discussion 
there as well. So please check out uh, my Patreon page if you get the chance. Again, thank you all for your support. Uh, I am planning for Sunday's game to be on the pro on the uh, PSF app on this Pro Sports Fan app. So check it out today. Download PSF from your local app store. Um, it's a great place to come chat and watch Orlando Magic basketball games. I'm doing about a game a week right now when the Magic are on the road. Um, so be, be sure to check that out. We'll be doing. Uh, I am planning to do an episode to to be on there to watch the Magic game along with you Sunday. Five o'clock for the Magic's game against Indiana Pacers. Be sure to check that out today. But that's going to do it for me today. I want to thank you all again for listening to today's episode of Locked On Magic. For Orlando Magic Daily and Locked On Magic, this has been Philip Rossman-Reich. We'll see you all again next time for another episode of Locked On Magic.